Students will start talking about the second uh, protocol in our list of random access protocols, and this protocol is the Carrier Sense Multiple Access, or CSMA. Students, uh, we'll talk about two variants of this CSMA. Later on, the first one is CSMA-CD, collision detection, and the CSMA-CA, collision avoidance. But to start with, let's talk about CSMA. Students, CSMA was developed to improve the, the performance over ALOHA. The base concept of multiple access is the same as what we have gone through in the case of ALOHA. But in this particular case, the difference is that this is a, a listen before you talk or um, sense before you transmit protocol. In other words, every station or every node before it transmits or, or throws its data over the shared medium, it has to listen to that medium to make sure that the medium is idle and it's not um, busy. If it's busy, it backs off and does not transmit. If it's idle, it just throws its transmission um, over the line. So students, once again, it's, it's sense before transmit or listen before you talk. Now students, in this particular case as well, the number of collisions is considerably reduced. We um, increase the efficiency of, of the system over ALOHA by, by quite a bit. But even this technique does not uh, completely eliminate collisions. Students, and the reason for, the, for CSMA uh, not being able to completely eliminate these collisions is, uh, is based on a concept which is called as propagation delay. Students, slide per challenge, and I'll try to explain to you why the collisions still happen, although every single station is now sensing and listening to the medium before throwing any data on the medium. Let's go to the slide. So students, um, the concept in this particular case is that of propagation delay. The reason for collisions is the propagation delay. Students, um, propagation delay ko dekhte hain. When a station sends a frame in CSMA, it still takes some time before this frame gets to all the other stations that are sharing the medium. And that delay or the small amount of time, this, it's the, the amount of time is very small, but there is a, a very small delay. And this propagation delay, the time that it takes for the first bit of a frame that's sent on the medium to reach all the other stations is called propagation delay. And this is what causes um, collisions over that medium, although every single station is now listening to the medium. Students, um, as an example, just look at the slide and you can see that at time T1, B out here, it senses the medium and it finds the medium idle. So what it does is it, it starts sending the frame at time T1. Our students, um, in this particular case, at time T2, which is this time, and, and uh, time T2 is greater than time T1, at time T2, C senses the medium and it starts sending its frame as well. And why it starts sending its frame? Because it finds the medium idle. And the reason for that is the data that's sent by B, the frame that's sent by B, the first bit of that frame has not yet reached um, the station C. So it senses the medium, finds it idle, sends the data, but there is a frame from B which is already on its way. So what happens is the two signals collides, collide and, and, and the, the data from both the system, systems gets garbled. So students, in this particular case, um, the vulnerable time for CSMA is equal to the propagation time. So in this case of CSMA, our vulnerable time is equal to propagation time or TP. And this TP is the time that's needed for a signal to propagate from one end of the medium to the other, the whole thing. So what it essentially means is if at time T1, um, A starts sending the frame, then B senses it here, C senses it here, and D senses it here. And if either of them, they find the medium idle, they actually start transmitting and we end up with a collision. So the total propagation time, if A is sending data in this particular case to D, the total propagation time of that particular frame from A to D is our vulnerable time for the 
collision. We need to wait for that much amount of time before any other station starts transmitting in CSMA. Otherwise, we will end up with a collision. Now, students, one additional concept before we leave this topic of CSMA, and that's the persistence method. So, persistence methods define what should a station do if the channel is busy or in the idle state. So, students, there are three techniques that we employ. The first one is the I persistent. In this I persistent method that you are looking at out here, this is the simplest of all the methods. In this method, after the station finds the line idle, it sends the frame immediately without waiting. And this method obviously has got the highest chances of collision. So this one has got highest collision rate. But students, um, as you will see later on, the most famous of our Ethernet LAN technologies, which is called as Ethernet, it still uses um, I persistence. Students, uh, non-persistence is our second method. In this case, if the channel has time slots, um, a station that has frame to send, it senses the line in this case. If the line is idle, it sends immediately. If the line is not idle, it waits for a random amount of time and then senses the line again. So students, collision rate in this case goes down as compared to I persistent, but the efficiency goes down as well. And the reason for that is in the case of non-persistent, even if the medium is vacant or idle, you know, using the wait, sense, and wait technique, the, the, the stations may just be waiting even if, the, uh, even if the shared medium is idle. So our efficiency of the system comes down as well. And students, the last method is P-persistent method. And, and this is the case when we have got a slot duration, which is equal to or greater than the maximum propagation time. Um, students, the, this approach, it combines the advantages of both I-persistent and, and uh, non-persistent uh, techniques of collision avoidance. And, and if you um, go and look into the details in your, in your textbook, you'll see that um, if the line is idle, um, then, uh, then it actually transmits. But if the line is busy, it acts as though a collision has already occurred and it uses the back-off procedure. And that back-off procedure is the main trait that makes this a better choice uh, in terms of the persistent message.